Everyone is asking me to give my insight into the latest ceasefire deal that was recently announced by President Biden. I think it is important that I clarify three main points before going more into depth explaining this new deal. Point number one, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu will never agree to any deal that ends the war. Impossible. No, I have not had the chance to speak with Netanyahu personally, but from my understanding of the reality of our situation and what I know about Prime Minister Netanyahu, there is no way Netanyahu would be agreeing to any ceasefire deal that puts an absolute end to this war. Netanyahu understands that Biden and the current and many current and former Israeli security intelligence officers, senior leaders who support ending the war to free the hostages, like Gantz and Eisenkot, are more interested in toppling Netanyahu than protecting Israel. Israeli citizens must be able to live after this war, knowing that there will never, ever again be rockets shot from Gaza or threats of infiltrations. Never again. There is no other option instead of ending this war. Totally, with victory. Point number two. The war up north didn't begin yet. Hezbollah is now shooting at as south as the city is of Akko, closer to Haifa. All of Israel's north is in danger from Hezbollah. No diplomatic solution will protect Israelis. UN Resolution 1701, after the Second Lebanon War in 2006, forbid Hezbollah from having any soldiers south of the Litani River and forbid Hezbollah from bringing weapons into Lebanon. And guess what? Hezbollah went against both of those conditions without the international community stepping in to enforce UN Resolution 1701. So we have the dangerous situation today. So no Israelis trust any diplomatic solution from the international community. The only solution is military, with the IDF wiping out Hezbollah and Lebanon and putting a total end to their military threat to Israeli citizens. And Netanyahu knows that in order to have unity of the people to launch that war against Hezbollah up north, Netanyahu needs Gantz and Eisenkot in the government. Otherwise, the political left and the media will call the war political and split the nation during a very necessary war against Hezbollah that will create a dangerous situation in a war that we must win. And the Biden administration will be trying to stop us from fighting that war, so we need the unity of the people. Hence, Netanyahu is willing to do almost anything with this ceasefire deal to make it hard for Gantz and Eisenkot to leave the government. Point number three. This ceasefire deal is not about freeing the hostages. It's about Biden working with Gantz and Eisenkot to topple Netanyahu and his government. Why else were Gantz and Eisenkot already threatening to leave the government last week, even though they knew that Netanyahu was already working on this latest ceasefire deal with the Biden administration? They were claiming Netanyahu wasn't doing enough, and here they knew he was working on a deal. That is why Netanyahu is allowing people to think that the ceasefire deal is bad according to what Gantz and Eisenkot want, making it hard for them to leave the government because it embarrasses them because it's what they want, and Netanyahu is doing it. So will Hamas say yes to the deal? Well, I am positive they will say no to any deal that Netanyahu does not agree to a total stop to the war. Will they end up agreeing? Don't know, but that's the condition they can't agree to. Will Gantz and Eisenkot leave the Israeli government? Also, I have no clue. Even though they are working for the Biden administration in the Israeli government against the Israeli people, so I don't want them there, I do hope Netanyahu succeeds with his political magic to not have them leave the government, because we need the unity of the nation to fight the war up north against Hezbollah and Iran. But if Gantz and Eisenkot do leave the government, we will still fight that war. It will just be much more challenging without the unity of the nation and with the Biden administration working against us. One way or another, these are very challenging times for the Jewish people with our Arab Muslim enemies and Iran specifically, seeing how both the Biden administration and Israeli political and security leadership, how they are backstabbing the Israeli people and our enemies smell blood, which is very bad news because it helps them want to do more bad things to us. But like I always say, we will overcome. We're going to overcome our external enemies. We're going to overcome our frenemies in the Biden administration. And we're going to overcome our internal challenges. And everyone... What we do today is we pray and pray hard and keep on listening to me for the inspiring politically incorrect truth at pulseofisrael.com. We will overcome everyone. We will, no matter how bad it looks, no no matter how bad things get, we will overcome. So if you're not yet a subscriber to the Pulse of Israel, go to pulseofisrael.com and click to subscribe and to support our work to ensure more people see these videos and podcasts to hear the inspiring politically incorrect truth. Just click on the donate button every once in a while on pulseofisrael.com. In the meantime, everyone, enjoy the beautiful ancestral homeland of the Jewish people. We are home. We're going to protect it. We're going to make this place better. Despite all of the challenges and our enemies, we're going to succeed. We didn't come back after 2,000 years to lose it. We are back for good. Am Yisrael Chayetz. Thanks to our soldiers, our holy soldiers on the ground. 
not the senior leadership, it's our holy soldiers on the ground, and God above who is watching over us and provides all the miracles, every daily miracle that we survive and that we live. Pray to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, pray for our holy IDF soldiers. I'm Yisrael Chayzel. Thanks for watching. Pulse of Israel, frontline videos from the Holy Land. Support our work by donating today.